Hello everyone. I wanted to take a moment to introduce what's new with Mobile Geo Databases. In Pro 2.7, we have exposed Mobile Geo Databases throughout the app, and you'll notice a similar user experience to file and enterprise geo databases. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a Mobile Geo Database, add some data, uh, modify the data, and just email a copy of the geo database to work with offline. Now let's take a look at creating the Mobile Geo Database. In Pro 2.7, you'll be able to create a mobile geo database through all the familiar options, such as the insert ribbon, the geo processing tool, and the catalog pane. For this example, I'm going to use the catalog pane to create the mobile geo database. So let's do that and give it the name mobile demo. What you'll notice is, is that the mobile geo database that was just created as a dot geodatabase extension. Now that I've created the geodatabase, I'm going to add some data to it. Now I've already have some data in the file geodatabase that I'm going to work with. So I'm going to add the line and point feature classes to it. Once you've added data to the mobile geodatabase, you'll notice main was appended to the name for each feature class that was added. The reason for this is because the mobile geodatabase is built on top of SQLite. And SQLite uses a logical database name, and main is reserved for that primary database. Now, main is used regardless of the physical database file name, which is also known as the path or location. You can see both the logical database and physical database file names in the properties page. Now I'm ready to send my mobile geodatabase to my workstation to take offline. The single file nature of SQLite databases makes mobile geodatabases extremely simple to be sent by email. So I'm going to close Pro, go to the location that the file is stored, and attach it to an email, and hit send. Once I receive the email, all I have to do is save the file to a location, open Pro, and connect to the geodatabase, and I'm ready to go. For this example, I'm going to open without template, and in this case, I'm going to rename the geodatabase to make it more meaningful. Now I'm going to modify my data by applying a buffer and then selecting the buffer locations that intersect with the bicycle paths to see which locations are easily accessible. So I'm going to add the data to the map. I'm going to run the buffer geoprocessing tool. I'm going to select the monuments as the input. I'm going to name the output. And then I'm going to enter one kilometer buffer distance and leave the remaining parameters as the default values and then click run. And finally, I'm going to select the buffered locations that intersect with the bicycle paths.